Grace, mercy, much peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The gospel reading for this first Sunday in Lent is always the story of Jesus' temptation, rotating between Matthew, Mark, and Luke's gospel. It is a great text because it well sets the stage for this Lenten season. It gets right to the conflict between Jesus and the ancient serpent, Satan. And it culminates with Jesus' victory on the cross and in the empty tomb on Easter Sunday. Although Mark's description of the temptation of Jesus is incredibly brief, much briefer than Matthew and Luke's accounts, what a great picture it provides. Jesus comes to the Jordan to be baptized by John, to fulfill all righteousness, to identify himself with sinful mankind. But although he identifies with sinners, Jesus comes, when Jesus comes out of the water, the Father's voice provi provides that epiphany revelation, you are my beloved son. Then, with water perhaps still dripping off his head, the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. Again, he goes into the wilderness to identify with us, to be tempted by that ancient serpent, Satan. Mark tells us, in fact, that he was being tempted for 40 days. And the Greek is really that he was being continuously tempted for 40 days. Matthew and Luke record three of those specific temptations. We don't know if they were the first ones, the last ones, or spread out among those 40 days. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself off the highest point of the temple, for the angels will guard and catch you. All these kingdoms laid out before you can be yours if you simply bow down and worship me. Jesus is in the wilderness, being tempted to doubt the Father's love and provision, to turn away from the Father's will, to live a life of glory rather than a life that leads to the cross. Jesus has a difficult wilderness experience, to say the least. As Jesus identifies with us in the wilderness, we certainly can identify with wilderness, ex wilderness experiences of our own, can't we? We have had that desolate place in our lives where we dealt with the temptations and snares of the serpent, Satan, as well. Whether it's a dying marriage or a dying loved one, we are in a wilderness it may be a wayward child or an unfaithful spouse, but we find ourselves in a wilderness. We may be in a state of joblessness or on the verge of homelessness, but we are in a wilderness. When the pressures of life batter and beleaguer us, we are in a place where we are struggling against Satan and this sinful world and our sinful flesh. If we are not fighting poor health, we are fighting powers and principalities on high. If we are not involved in church conflict, then we are in the midst of marital conflict or work conflict or school conflict. If we are not wrestling with God, we find ourselves wrestling with God's people. We are tired and tested on every side way too often. Wild beasts try to devour us. Satan attempts to turn us from our Savior to drive us to doubt and despair. We all know wildernesses. In fact, the truth is, is that we find ourselves in the wilderness every day. For daily we give in to temptation and sin in thoughts, words, and deeds by what we've done and by what we've left undone. Every day we find ourselves in the wilderness being tempted by Satan and giving into that temptation time and time again. 
We get frustrated with our spouse and angry with our children. We find it easier to focus on the things we don't like about people than to love them for who they are. We talk about others behind their backs. We lust and cheat and lie, and the list goes on and on. What are the wildernesses you find yourself in today? What are the pressures of this sinful world on your life of faith? What sin is recurring in your life that you just can't overcome? In what ways does Satan seek to keep you in the wilderness? You see, we find ourselves in the wilderness every day, struggling against Satan and the sinful world and our own sinful flesh. But this is exactly why Jesus entered into our wilderness. Still drenched in baptismal water, the Holy Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness of temptation. Heaven and hell were about to exchange blows. And in the celestial realm, perhaps you could hear the proverbial pin drop. In the plush Garden of Eden, the first Adam was defeated by the ancient serpent at the tree. But in the wasteland of the Judean wilderness, the second Adam, Jesus, fought off the temptations of the evil one. Every fiery arrow that shot from Satan's bow was doused in the water of God's word. Heaven and hell stood toe to toe, and hell and all its power fell. Do you see what the Lord has done in his conquest of Satan and all his temptations? He has utterly reversed the fall of the first Adam and has brought forward a new humanity, with himself being a new Adam, who bears in his own body the source of true and lasting life for you and me. What you could not do, Christ has done for you. The tempter whom you never could defeat on your own, Christ has defeated the new beginning that you could never create, Jesus has created for you. Satan could not turn Jesus from the cross. It is there that he took all of the sin that throws you and me into the wilderness each and every day. All the sin that tears us from the Father's kingdom. All the sin that deserves eternal death, separation from God forever. He took it all to the cross and pay and paid the full price of sin with his lifeblood. That is the victory of Good Friday. And with Jesus' resurrection on the third day, that victory is assured and sin is paid in full. Our Lord Jesus has fought this battle for you and for me. His victory over the devil is our victory as well. For all that Christ accomplished has been reckoned to us as our very own. When we fall prey to temptation by Satan, we flee to the one who defeated Satan. As 1 Corinthians 10 promises, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Those who are in Christ Jesus cannot be harmed by the enticements of Satan. As in Adam you all died, so in Christ you all live. When tempted, we flee to Jesus for help. When we fall into temptation and sin, we repent and return to the Lord for forgiveness. We leave the old Adam and his death, and we come to the new Adam with his life. He will receive and embrace us as his own. He who is tempted for us is never tempted to turn away from us. In holy baptism, we have been buried with Christ and raised to a new life. So his conquering of sin is our conquering of sin. His crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension are ours. We have victory over sin, death, and the devil through his victory. And although we know that God will not spare us suffering and crosses and pain and trials in this life, 
We know that as Paul writes in Romans 8, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we stand firm in the forgiving love of Jesus, there is no temptation or trial that can change the status of being God's beloved son or beloved daughter. Martin Luther says it well in our closing hymn today. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child, or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. And so we pray, our Father, lead us not into temptation, but lead us to and keep us in the one who conquered the tempter for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise. <clears throat> and now may the peace that